All right, so hi everyone. This is uh, Neil Hopley here from Warframe Group. I created another sports template, and I based this template off of something I saw on Sportsnet. I watch a lot of hockey here in Canada, so um, and Sportsnet has some fantastic graphics uh, right now going on in the NHL. So I'll just show you the clip real quickly and show you what I pretty much based this uh, this graphic on. So you see there, there's a, a nice, you know, animation, and there's a player, and his name's down there. And it's in this beautiful, you know, 3D environment. Uh, it looks probably as though there's a lot of clips. There's probably a, a basic clip in the background. Maybe some real-time 3D objects in front, and, you know, you're probably able to change that image, image uh, of the player on the fly. You know, it could be NHL, it could be NFL, soccer, you know, anything you want, really. And that name is obviously down there. Um, or... I mean, it looks pretty, it looks really good. It could even be a, a clip, um, a full you know rendered clip, say from After Effects or something like that. Now that'd be really time consuming, uh, rendering all those clips for every single player in the NHL or whatever you know NFL. You're talking about hundreds and hundreds of, of renders. So what I did was in Expression, I created one template that can basically be um, reused and can and the image can change and obviously the text can change because it is it is 3D text. You can see my name is in there now, Neil Hopley. Um, so what I want to show you is just a little bit how I created this graphic. I'll just bring the object manager out here a little bit. I'll just make it a little bit larger here, and I'll bring the main viewport over to the right. Uh, so I got a lot of things going on in here. Now, first of all, I I, I modeled the actual uh, main object in Cinema 4D. Um, and I'll actually open up that in the background to show you. So I, I modeled the uh, basic object in Cinema 40, which is this object right here. And uh, I'll actually go into Cinema 40 and show you that. If I go open recent, uh, this guy. So uh, here's the object in Cinema 40. Um, you can see I had some glass panels here actually that I ended up hiding in expression just because I didn't want to use it anymore. Um, these guys here. Um, they're actually still in the import of expression. They're just they're hidden. They're right there. I just found it didn't. I didn't really need it. It looked. Uh, I like the way it looked without it. And we just go into the scene director, and I'll show you what the animation does. So it's just a nice little camera movement. I'm animating the perspective camera. Get that out of the way. So it starts in the, like, that point, and when you play it. So it starts at that point, and when you scrub through it, it goes around to reveal that. And you got lights going on, you got all kinds of things going on, some glows. Uh, let me press this little icon up here, which is going to show our hard continuous animations. With this enabled, you now you're going to see all the uh, video effects going on. So you can see that there's a lot of stuff going on. I got a pulsating light light effect at the top, those pulsating lights at the top and the bottom, and it's actually pulsating uh, an actual omni light in there as well so I added another point light in there and if I bring out my uh, object manager you'll see that I have uh, where the, here's that point light and I actually have a continuous animation on that point light so if I go to continuous animation and have it sine wave asymmetric and the alpha so I start the actual light off with an alpha of zero so it's not actually doing anything in the scene and then I pulse that with an amplitude of 50 so it's basically going from zero alpha to 50 alpha now I could change that to 100 here, which would just make it a brighter, um, brighter effect in the actual scene. But I just found it to be too bright, so I just basically put it to to 50. And I got a color on that on the specular just to give it a little bit light, uh, yellowish color. Um, so that's how I did the, the pulsating effect. Uh, all these kind of glows, uh, those are basically just textures. Everything in in a real time you know, rendering system is all about faking it. Uh, so textures is your best friend. If you can make really good textures or use textures um, and know how to blend them properly, um, you can get some pretty pretty cool results. If I put this on air so that you can see what happens. So at, at the end of it, so the whole idea of this graphic basically is um, the, the camera comes around to reveal the, the, um, the player, the player's name is there, and then at the end of it, it moves down and then wipes to whatever video you want to wipe to. Right, so it's a nice little, you know, five second, roughly five six second, roughly animation. And let's go into the sequencer now, and uh, and see what we can do with this one template and how we can change the image, change the text on the fly. So I'll go to the sequencer. I'll drag my player profile in there. I got my preview over to the right hand side here. Right 
Now, if I just click on my actual image, it's going to actually highlight the picture published object. And you can see that my, my material face is there. And I can just go ahead now and choose a different image in here. And I prepared some images that I can just replace these guys for. So instead of um, Ronaldo, uh, this I could put that image of Ronaldo instead, say. And now I can play this graphic with that image of Ronaldo, right? All in real time. Obviously, we want to change that name to Neil, uh, from, to, from Neil Hopley to Ronaldo, but you get the point. So now what I can do is just keep, keep adding, uh, I could change this name to um, Chris Ronaldo. I think that's how you spell his name, I don't know. Drag another one in. This time, I'll change this guy to Put a football player. Let's go, Peyton Manning. There he is. And then we're gonna click the text. You can click the text in the preview. Peyton Manning. Now the actual text in 3D says Peyton Manning. And if you execute that and put that to air, right? Cool. So if I drag another guy in there. Click on the image and let's put another football player. Let's put this guy. This guy looks nice and mean. I'm going to put this guy's name as Joe Smith, right? So if I click on the Neil Hopley text and just type in Joe Smith. And then it writes itself in 3D and put this guy on there. So an expression, you could you know create some fantastic looking 3D you know sport graphics and have it editable, which means you can change the image, change the text, which are, is actually 3D text, and have that one template satisfy every single need you want for all the players in any sport. So another thing I added to this scene, I don't know if you can notice it in the video quality here, but the scene is, is kind of blurred out, and you can see that the image of, uh, of Ronaldo is, is pretty pretty crisp, but everything in behind him and even a little bit of the uh, end of the Hopley is, is out of focus. That's because I placed a uh, depth of field effect on the actual scene. So if I move up to the top of the object manager and click on the actual, what I call, you know, scene setting profile object, uh, and then go to the effects tab, you can see that I have a depth of field effect in here. And I got that basically from the effect tab, which is on the right hand side of the UI. And if I just go into inside blur and sharpen, I have this depth of field, you literally just drag it in there. Now, if I double click on this depth of field, you see that I get this little window. And if I just clicked on this visualize, I can actually visualize. Uh, so the green area you're seeing there is the plane or the area in which that's going to be in focus and everything outside of that is going to be kind of blurred. And that's all changeable, I can change the distance. Right, which is affects how you know where this, where in this scene there's going to set the focus, and I try to set the focus pretty much where the image is, and you can set the focal width, right? Um, and then yeah, and that's all I did. So that's why you see this kind of blurriness, which kind of uh, is what you would get out out of a real render, anyways. Uh, so uh, a little added effect, and it does a really great job. Uh, that's it for this tutorial. Stay tuned for others. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks a lot.